When you think of the quintessential French food, chances are stinky cheese comes to mind. The French are convinced that they make the best cheese in the world. And on top of being a source of national pride, it's one of France's largest exports. So why does French cheese have such a great reputation? Why are there so many of them? And this one still baffles me after all these years. How the heck are you supposed to cut it? Join us for this episode of French Connections Plus, where we plunge into the creamy heaven that is French cheese. France is famous around the world for the quality and the variety of its cheeses. Well, President Charles de Gaulle famously said, how in the world can you govern a country that has 258 types of cheeses? The truth of the matter is there's actually a lot more than that. Well, estimates put the number of distinct varieties of cheese as high as 1,200, which means that you could eat a different cheese every day of the year for three years and you still wouldn't have tasted all of them. And it's true, the French do eat a lot of cheese. They are among the biggest cheese consumers in the world. They eat a whopping 30 kilos of cheese a year. That's about a half kilo a week, or the equivalent of this a day. And just like wine, cheese is part of a tradition that's centuries old. French cheese is as old as France itself. The delicious tradition began in French monasteries. From the 13th century on, French farmers started inventing regional cheeses. Distinctive climates and vegetation helped create unique flavors. Traditionally, cheesemaking was a woman's craft, with recipes and savoir-faire handed down over generations. You've probably heard of Comté, Brie, or Camembert, but there are countless other regional specialties. In fact, it's a great way to discover France. And there's something for everyone. Hard cheese, soft cheese, blue cheese, cheese made from the milk of cows, goats, and sheep. These days, most cheese is crafted in factories, but the tastiest ones are still made by hand. For cheese to be delicious, it has to age in a special way. This is known as affinage, and it often happens in the same damp cellars that have been used for years. It's here that the right bacteria works its magic, and it can produce strong smells along the way. This might explain France's reputation for stinky cheese, although the French will tell you it smells delicious. The world of French cheese can be a minefield of unwritten rules, and many of you sent in your questions about cheese, like the Junto, who wanted to know just when do the French eat their cheese? Well, Judy, there is a time and a place to eat cheese, and it is at the end of the meal, right before dessert, often with salad and definitely with wine. Next question from Ben Whaley, who wanted to know about the rind. With a cheese like brie, do you eat the rind or not? To rind or not to rind, that is the question. And it definitely depends on the cheese. Now, the thing is, the rind is where the most flavor is, but it's also where bitterness is, and so it might not be to your liking. But I always say, if you're the one digesting it, you should have the final word, no matter what everyone else says. Like many things here in France, there is an unwritten set of rules governing cheese, how to eat it, how to cut it. So here are a few basic do's and don'ts. Cheese etiquette is tricky, and to help me navigate this minefield, I have called on Pierre Brisson. Hello, bonjour. Who owns a cheese shop in Paris. It's called Parole de Fromager Pierre. I'm having a dinner party tonight. How can I choose my cheeses? <sighs> this is a tough question. <laughs> you know, when you go to a cheese shop, there's so many cheese, so many types, so many textures, so many flavors. It's quite hard sometimes to, you know, to know exactly which cheese to pick. So one of the most important cheese that you have to get on a very traditional French cheese board is to get a piece of Comté. Okay. Voilà. You should get a piece of fruity Comté. What other cheeses should I put on my cheese plate? Alors, basically, you want to take uh, one cheese of different kinds, okay. so you can satisfy the taste of everyone. So come with me. Okay. Um, basically, right now, I suggest we get a soft texture. Mm -hmm. uh, we can take a brie de Melun. Then, we are going to take an osso erati, mm -hmm. which is a sheep one. cheese. And this <laughs> one's from the Pyrenees. Uh, from the Pyrenees regions, exactly. After, a che cheese plate without a blue cheese uh -huh. is like a day without sun, you know, so. <laughs> We need a blue cheese. Uh, I suggest Roquefort. Roquefort is one of the most uh, ancient uh, blue cheese that we have uh, in France. And then I'm taking you to the cheese aging cellar to get the goat cheese. Let's go. <laughs> 
This is where all the magic happens. So that is a Valencé. Okay. And it's actually very creamy, just on the rind. It's gonna be white and fresh inside. And this is a goat cheese from yeah. Valencé. Smell that. Ooh, that smells very good. Yeah. All right, Pierre, so here is this beautiful cheese plate. The million dollar question is how in the world do you cut the cheese? <sighs> yes, this is a big question. I know, you know, the rule that you have to remember is you have to give to everyone one part of the cheese by the heart mm -hmm. and one part of the cheese by the rind. So the question is where is the heart and where is the stop? If I take the example of the Comté, mm -hmm. the heart of the cheese is there, 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 there. Stop here. So you have to get the cheese like this. So mm -hmm. you get center and rind, center and rind, and you stop this way. And from this point, you have to change the way you cut the cheese. So there's one type of cheese that's particularly confusing, and that's cheeses with noses. The rules says that you don't cut the nose of a cheese. If you're doing this in an official French dinner, ooh la la. It's not polite. No, no, no. So you cut the cheese, and you still give it a little nose. And once you get close to the rind, you change the size. Here at Parole de Fromager, you actually give cheese tasting lessons. What is that? It's called caseology. Caseology is for cheese, what the oenology is for wine. So it's the science of tasting, pairing, aging uh, cheeses, and pairing it with wines and also many kinds of beverages. So you can actually learn how to make cheese with Pierre here, but that'll be for another time. In the meantime, we're going to enjoy this delicious cheeses. Thank you so much, Pierre, for being on the show. With great pleasure. French cheese is not only an integral part of the French psyche, it's also big business in France and abroad. Well, French cheese may smell, but it certainly does sell. France is the largest exporter of cheese in terms of value. It brings in about 3 billion euros a year. Now, about 80% of exports are here in Europe, but Japan and the United States are big markets as well. French cheeses have a massive reputation to protect. And so just like for French wine, certain brands are protected with a very elaborate trademark system. Well, there's the same AOC system, the Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, a label given to cheeses made in a specific region in a specific way. And then there's also the PDO system, the Protected Designation of Origin, an EU system. And only about 50 cheeses have been awarded both. These strict rules are in place to protect quality, of course, but also to keep French cheese brands from being copied in France. Brands like Camembert from Normandy, Roquefort, Conte, or Brie from Meaux or Melun. The problem is, though, there is no law that protects French cheese internationally. And that's why you can end up with Camembert or Brie made in other parts of the world. And that begs the question, is the future of French cheese safe? Hi, Veronique. Hi. Thanks so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you. So to find out more about the plight of French cheeses, I'm joined by Véronique richet le rouge You're the president of the Association Fromage de Terroir, the Cheese of the Land Association. Now, what's interesting is French people actually tend to eat a lot of industrial cheese. Uh, it's cheaper, more accessible. Is this a threat for handmade artisanal cheese? The consumer in France are very uh, interested by industrial cheese because they see that on the television. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have many advertising about industrial cheese and brands. We uh, noticed that the real cheese uh, has, has suffered uh -huh. about this situation. So what's the trick to getting people to eat more artisanal cheese? Uh, we need more advertising. We need more... Uh, travel in the farm. We need uh, to have many stores that, like here, uh, show uh, local cheese. In France, it's very sad to say that, but when you see the stores, the big stores, mm -hmm. always you see industrial cheese and very pasteurized cheese. Does raw milk necessarily make better cheese? The raw milk is always better. Raw milk, it means that you don't heat the milk. Mm -hmm. It means that you keep all the flavor of the flowers, for example, in summer. Uh, it, it gives you like a signature of the terroir. Mm -hmm. And uh, pasteurizing, it's, uh, it means that you kill the life mm -hmm. in the milk, and it means that you can make a cheese, you know, all the same, 
all the year, every day, and uh, it's the same test. It's uh, it ca you can you can keep it very well, yeah. of course, but it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. You mean it's like uh, a chair or a table? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it not alive. Not alive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What needs to be done to protect the quality of artisanal cheese and to help cheesemakers themselves? We have to give them hope. Mm -hmm. And they have to feel that people think that it's a, it's a really nice thing they do. When you make real cheese, you keep the, bio, the biodiversity. Mm -hmm. to, to protect French cheese and PDO, mm -hmm. we have to, to keep the high, high level quality. Uh, you know, industrial kills completely kill the cheese, the real cheese, and kill also the biodiversity and kill the landscape. I have one final question for you. At the recent World Cheese Awards, France came in eighth place. What can French cheesemakers do to up their game? For me, it's a good, it's a good news that France uh, is only on the eighth uh, position because we cannot fight and we don't want to fight uh, with industrial cheese like American or Canadian cheese. Mm -hmm. For me, this kind of awards means nothing. Mm -hmm. So I don't care about France, uh, you know, being eighth place. Yes. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Veronique. Thank Thanks you. for being on the show today. Now, it might sound cheesy, but France's love of cheese is real. It's the answer to so many of life's problems. And if you ask expats, it's one of the things they miss the most about home, that and good bread. Rumor has it that some people have tried to smuggle unpasteurized cheese out of France, uh, hiding it in dirty laundry or coffee so as to go undetected. We, of course, do not condone that activity. But in many ways, that's what's so special about French cheese is that it's associated with being in France, or rather in a particular region. It's a unique part of visiting the country and experiencing it truly and all its stinky deliciousness. <laughs> that wraps it up for today's show about cheese. Flo, what's your favorite cheese? My heart belongs to Comté Fruité. I'm a tum girl. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can tweet me at Flo Vilmano or reach out on Facebook. And we'll see you soon for a new French Connections Plus. In 1989, Romania is steeped in severe poverty with dictator Ceausescu's austerity policy. Lack of freedom, lack of press, lack of food, lack of basic rights, lack of you name it. Citizens take to the streets to protest the regime. The army opens fire. Democracy triumphs, but a bloodbath is the cost. 30 years later, our reporters went back to Timisoara, where the protest broke out. Timisoara is a ville European in which the ethnic groups refused and refuse the nationalism. Meet the people behind the uprising, who still feel the revolution fell short of expectations. The heart of the Romanian Revolution, all this week on France 24.